Hello friends and welcome back to Pachetti's Pormonology. Uh, today we will be studying very very important topic that is update on uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and dead in progressive pulmonary fibrosis. A very important update given in American Journal of Respiratory Medicine and Critical Care published in May 2022. That is the source of this video. Coming to today's agenda, we will be studying regarding the update on IPF. An update will be studying regarding the radiological update. Second, TPLC that is transbronchial lung cryobiopsy versus surgical lung biopsy. Third, genomic classifier. Fourth, antacid medications and surgery, their role in IPF. In progressive pulmonary fibrosis, we will be studying first the definition, then the list of diseases under PPF, and role of antifibrotic therapy in PPF. And fourth, and uh, sorry, and third, a very important term that is interstitial lung abnormality. So going to the first IPF, as you all know, as you all know the definition, it is chronic fibrosing interstitial pneumonia of unknown cause, important unknown cause. It is associated with radiological and histological features of usual interstitial pneumonia. And this is the definition which you all know. Coming to the radiological uh, updates which I have mentioned in uh, uh, 2022 guidelines. Uh, again, it is again they have mentioned four uh, patterns: UIP pattern, probable UIT, indeterminate for UIP, and alternative diagnosis. Okay, as uh, you can see, UIP pattern: subplural, basal, heterogeneous, predominant reticular opacity with traction bronchiectasis with honeycombing with or without traction bronchiectasis or bronchiectasis that is the same but what are the changes they have see you can have marked it in the yellow it is occasionally diffuse may be asymmetric and they have mild they might have mild GGO and may have pulmonary ossification these four were not in the previous 2018 guidelines which they have mentioned it okay mild GGO in the previous 2018 was under the probable UIP pattern but now in, in 2022 it's included in the UIP pattern that is an important change Coming to the probable UIP pattern, which is the same subplural, basal, predominant, often heterogeneous, reticular, reticular opacities with traction bronchiectasis or bronchiolectasis. But important thing is absence of subplural sparing. UIP without without saying goes with absence of subplural uh, sparing. But they added this term here. And the important change that they made made in indeterminate for UIP is it need not be subplural predominant. You can see here the important thing which they made is diffuse distribution without subplural predominance. But in 2018, what they had made, it was subplural and basal predominance. But here, there is, it need not be subplural predominance. Okay, it is a major change. And one more thing is, early UIP pattern was used under indeterminate for UIP in 2018. But now it is not used. Why? I will explain in coming slides. And alternative diagnosis, it is the same. Okay, remember the uh, changes which I have marked it in the yellow. These are the, all are the newer updates in 2022. Radiological features. Coming to the HRCT image. You can see it is a UIP pattern. So this is subplural. You can see all the disease is subplural in nature, bilateral, and you can see and it's basal predominant because it is a lower row axial image. You can see these all are honeycombing. These all are honeycombing. Okay, you can see here honeycombing. What is honeycombing? It's a cluster cystic spaces which share the wall, which would be of size three to ten mm in size. You can see the all are honeycombing cysts which share the wall. Okay, they all share the wall. So this cyst is sharing the wall with this cyst because this is a common sharing wall. And one important thing is this bronchiectasis or the traction bronchiolectasis is the non tapering of bronchi towards the periphery. Usually, the bronchi taper towards the periphery. When bronchiectasis or bronchiolectasis, the bronchi or airway do not taper towards the periphery. And this non tapering uh, airway forms honeycombing cyst. Okay, this, both are not separate entity. They both are in continuum. Okay, traction bronchiectasis or bronchiolectasis leads to honeycombing cyst you can see this honey this uh, non tapering airway that is traction bronchiectasis is forming this honeycombing cyst so in this uh, 2022 ipf guidelines they have focused mainly on this entity because previously they had considered it separate but now it's the same you can see here also it's continuing the same and forming your honeycombing cyst okay coming to, and one more thing which they have mentioned is important differentiation between the cyst of other origin with the UIP cyst. They have mainly mentioned regarding the emphysematous cyst. Usually emphysematous cyst, it is paraseptal emphysematous cyst in, uh, mainly in smokers, it's upper lobe. But I have taken the lower lobe image so that I can, uh, you can help it clearly differentiate it from the UIP pattern. See here also, you have lower lobe cyst, you can see. The, these are also subplural in nature, you can see. Bilateral. But important thing, how to differentiate it from the UIP cyst is first the size. You can see the size is very small, but here the size is very large. Second, there is no features of fibrosis like reticular opacity, traction bronchiectasis as you can as you could see in this HRCT image. You can see can traction bronchiectasis, 
but here there is no such neurological fibrotic ab abnormality okay that is how you differentiate one will be the cyst size second will be presence of radiological fibrotic changes coming to the tvlc that is transbronchial lung crab biopsy recommendation tvlc can be regarded as alternative to surgical lung biopsy for diagnosis of uip pattern a very important recommendation okay previously slb was used for uh, the diagnosis but now they have shared that tvlc can also be used as an alternative because the risk of pneumothorax bleeding post op complications are less in tvlc okay this is a second major recommendation third genomic classifier there is no recommendation for or against for diagnosis of uip okay there is no recommend for or against okay third a very important thing there is no that we suggest not treating patients with uip with antacid medications or surgical procedures or gid for purpose of improving the respiratory outcome see for improving the respiratory outcome you need not put ipf patient on antacid treatment or subject subject them to gid or say if they have gid you can put on antacid treatment but just for improving the respiratory outcome you need not put it okay this is another important recommendation I mean to the very important term progressive pulmonary fibrosis in patients with ILD of known or unknown cause other than IPF. Okay, it should not be IPF. It should be other than IPF who has radiological evidence of fibrosis. Okay, this is the basic criteria which is required. But you should have at least two of the, two of three criteria, which which are those. You should have clinical worsening of the respiratory symptoms. You can see they should have clinical worsening of the respiratory symptoms and physiological worsening. What, what is it? What is that? It is absolute decline in FEC more than five percent of the predicted in the one year, or absolute decline in DLCO more than ten percent. FEC more than five percent, DLC more than ten percent in one year. This is physiological worsening. Third, radiological worsening. One or more of the following should be there. What are those? You can see here increase, increase extent of severity of traction bronchiectasis, new grassland or groundless opacity, new finer reticulations. Extent of coarseness of reticular abnormality, new honey or increased honeycombing, increased lobular volume loss. These are all other radiological features. One of more features can be there, along with physiological and clinical. And two of th these three criteria should be there. It should meet at least two of three. Okay, not all three should be met. At least two or three: either clinical, physiological, radiological. These are the three. Any two out of three should be met to call it as progressive pulmonary fibrosis. These are all the list of diseases which are included in progressive pulmonary fibrosis. You can see here on the left hand side, idiopathic fibrotic NSIP, progressive, progressive pulmonary fibrosis, elastosis, fibrotic organization pneumonia. These are all the list of PPF diseases. A very important recommendation. A conditional recommendation was made for nitidanib and additional research into perfinidone for was recommended in treatment of PPF. We recommend nitidanib in the treatment of PPF and perfinidone requires further research for using research in the treatment of ppf so they have clearly mentioned that nitidanib can be used for treatment of ppf but perfidinone will require further research in that a very other important thing a last thing that is interstitial lung abnormality what is this in this condition ct features of lung fibrosis like reticulation interlobular lines architectural distortion seen either in isolation or superimposed with ggos often associated with histological evidence of fibrosis okay is an important risk factor for mortality uh, how to explain this suppose a patient has come come to you for routine screening for lung cancer you get a hrct test and then you can see they have features of early fibrosis like reticulation interlobular lines architectural destruction all those patients we label them as interstitial lung abnormality and they have independent risk factor for mortality because they have, there is high risk for progression in four to six years. Okay, remember this decisional lung abnormality. Thank you all. Thank you all for patience listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Patriotic Palmology. Thank you. If you have any doubt, please leave it in the comment box.